stop promising God that you will do this if he does this for you. It is very wrong. My name is Olusha Gumokuolu. Let us pray. Father, we just pray and ask that you will give us understanding of your word. That every word that we have spoken in haste, you will deliver us and give us understanding today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Many Christians are fond of promising to do something for God. And in their thinking, they think that it is actually right, it is correct or godly. However, it is sinful and contrary to the New Testament gospel. What do we mean? For example, maybe you are sick and you say, God, if you will heal me of this sickness, I will be sending money for missions. Things like that. Or maybe you are seeking a breakthrough in one area. You have applied for visa. You now say, God, if you grant me this visa, I'll be involved in evangelism. I'll be going every Sunday to go and evangelize in a particular place for you. It could be different things. There are different things people promise to God. Now, I want to say to you authoritatively that this is not a New Testament concept. You are violating the word of God. You are violating the te teachings of Christ. In fact, you are violating the very gospel of Christ that brought you into light by such action. Let me quickly show you from the scriptures a few things that you are violating. Now, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, it says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own? You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. Now, I want you to understand this. If you are no longer your own, that means you are not in a position any longer to make promise to anybody. If you belong to God, it is not you that will be telling God, if you do this for me, I will evangelize. No, God has commanded you to go and preach the gospel to all nations. And he has 100% control over your life because he has paid a price for you. He did not only create you, he redeemed you. He is your savior. He paid the price. He owns you. So uh, you that you are owned, how can you be making promise to him? You see, for you to make a promise, you must have capacity and independence to be able to fulfill that promise. But when you come to Christ, you no longer have that. You cannot say, Lord, if you will, uh, my, this my son, if he gets married, I am going to place 10 Bibles. No, it is very wrong. You can't promise God that. So that means that if your daughter doesn't get married, you are not going to place 10 Bibles. The very thing God has commanded you to do, you are now making it as a condition for God to do something for you. That is just pure foolishness. So please, you may be ignorant of this before now. But God is bringing this to your understanding now and to your notice. If you have made any vow, if you have made any commitment, if you have said any promise, go before the Lord, apologize, and it will be cancelled. You are not under obligation. In fact, let me tell you this. You think that keeping to that thing is a sign of your commitment to God, but it's actually disobedience. God will prefer that you break it and you do not actually do it because you now have a better understanding. Because what you are doing, you are actually doing it in rebellion. You are doing it in disobedience and in ignorance. Let me read another scripture to you. In John chapter 15 verse 5, Jesus said, I am divine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without Jesus, you can do nothing. So, on what basis are you promising God? 
Because you don't have capacity any longer in Christ Jesus to do anything. So why will you, that you don't even have control over your life, use that very life as a condition for God? Can you see that it is foolishness? How can you be saying, God, if, if you will make me to pass this exam, I am going to give you 50% of my next salary. If it is God that owns you 100%, you cannot be telling God how much you are going to give him. What of if God needs your salary 100%? Jesus said, of my own, you can do nothing. You don't have capacity to promise God or do anything to God. In the New Testament, it is God that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is not in you anymore. Your life is dead. The life you now have is the life of Jesus. You no longer have your life. See, you can only give out of things that you own. But you no longer own anything. You don't own your time. You don't own your mouth. You don't own your life. So, of what basis are you going to say, God, if you do this for me, this is what I will do for you? If God has done anything for you, just thank him for it. Just thank him for it. In fact, you may be saying, Lord, if you do this for me, if you give me this job, I will be involved in evangelism. But do you know God may not even want you to be involved in that kind of evangelism? You remember Paul when they wanted to preach in Asia Minor? The Holy Spirit forbade them from preaching there. But you, because you feel you, you have made a commitment, you may be going to places he didn't even send you. And you don't have capacity to win so. It is Holy Spirit that brings conviction upon men. If he has not sent you, you, will, you can do nothing. It's not about you saying, ah, I will be going. I will hold some tract and be, I will be going. Or I will be transferring money every month. You don't have that capacity. What happens if you die? What happens if you lose the job? So please, brethren, stop saying, God, if you do this, I will do this. If it, you, it's an ignorance of the New Testament. In this New Testament, you don't own yourself. You have no capacity of yourself. Without Jesus, you can do nothing. Nothing. So you can promise nothing because you don't have anything. Only God can promise because God has everything. And he has the capacity to back up his own promise. But you, you no longer have anything. See, just imagine a slave that has been bought. Look at Joseph, for example. He was sold into slavery. Imagine Joseph now promising a girl and said that, you see, by next month, I'll come and spend one month with you. Can a slave make such a promise? He does not own his life. He doesn't have capacity to bring about the fulfillment of that promise. You see, when you are saying, God, if you do this, I'll do this. You are invariably telling God that, God, in myself, I have some things I can give you. I have a favor I can do for you. I have a help I can give you. And you know, somehow it's as if you want to try to bribe God. In the New Testament, he's your father. God is not waiting to heal you so that you can be sending money for ministry. God is not waiting to heal you so that you can go about and be preaching. He is your father. He paid the price for your healing on the cross of Calvary. You were not born when he paid that price. He gave his own very life. He suffered for you when you were not yet born. You now think that it is your promise that will make him to do anything. That is an insult to the name of God. That is not New Testament. That is not the gospel of Christ. That is not the kingdom of God. So please, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, get this very clear. As we prepare to meet Jesus in the sky, as we prepare to reign with him in eternity, we must get all these basic things right. Because we are going to rule in the kingdom to come. And that's why he's using this side of time to prepare us for eternity. To prepare us to reign with him in eternity. His reigning with him is not automatic. That is why he's working upon our lives. To prepare us so that we will reign correctly in eternity. Let me also read to you. Matthew chapter 5 verse 33 to 37. Jesus speaking again said. Again you have heard it was said to the people long ago. 
Do not break your oath. You see the Old Testament concept. Do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. That is Old Testament. But I tell you, now this is Jesus, but I tell you, do not swear an oath at all. Can you see this, brethren? You are violating the teachings of Christ. The very Jesus that you want to please, you are violating his word by making a vow. Because what you have done is a vow. Some of you say, you know, I made this vow to the Lord, I want to keep it. Stop making a vow. You see, rather ask the Lord to walk through your life. You want to give to God? Ask God to enable you to give to his kingdom. Don't say, ah, Lord, if you do this for me, if you do this for me, I'm going to give you this. No, 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 no. But you see, God can do something for you and say, oh, Lord, uh, I'm grateful for what you have done. I'm pushing this. What you have given me out of that which you have committed to my hand, I'm committing this. That's a different case. You didn't make any promise. He has done what he wants to do and you are just expressing gratitude. And please understand that, you see, gratitude is not, God is not looking for gratitude that comes with something. I'm not saying anything is wrong. That, okay, you say, okay, I'm at uh, this church, I want to support or this ministry. Or, no, 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 no. But you see, gratitude is first of all the state of your heart. The state of your heart before God. Do you appreciate his mercy? Did you see that you didn't qualify for this, but he qualified you? Did you see that, see, there are many people who were looking for this, but he gave it to you? Is your heart grateful to God? That is first of all the matter of gratitude. You see, many people go and dance in church and say they are doing thanksgiving, but they really are not grateful to God. They have not really seen what he has done. When Jesus did the miracle of feeding 5,000 with bread and fish, he said they did not see the miracle. They only saw the bread. Can you see what he has done and your heart is lifted in thanksgiving, in adoration, in worship to God? Jesus said, don't make any vow at all. I think I should even stop there. But let me conclude that passage, that Matthew 5, uh, maybe verse 37. It says, all you need to simply say is yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Many people don't know. It is a satanic concept to be saying to God, if you do this, I'm going to give you this. It is not of God. Brethren, it is not of God. It's from the evil one. That thought, that mindset is not a kingdom mindset. I therefore want to plead with you. Let it end today. Whatever vow you have made is broken today and you are released from it in the name of Jesus. Please don't dwell on that guilt. What you are doing now is that you have removed yourself from rebellion into obedience. So don't feel guilty. Don't say, ah, but I promise God this. No, you can't keep it. You did it in ignorance. The Bible says the time was ignorance. God had overlooked, but has commanded men everywhere to repent. You have done it in ignorance. Now he has brought light to you. Simply repent. Please repent. God didn't do anything for you so that you can do anything to him. He has done what he will do out of his mercy, his favor, and his grace upon your life. Respond with gratitude. Respond with a gratitude heart. And be ready to make yourself available for him. That he can do whatever he wants with his life. And please, teach other people this same truth. Because it's a common thing that people do in the body of Christ and it grieves the heart of the Holy Spirit. And he has said, teach my people. Show them. Let them know. Let them stop promising me. I am the one who promises. That is God. He is the only one who promises. All he needs from us is an obedient heart. He just wants us to yield our life completely to him so that he can fill us with his son Jesus Christ. And through Jesus, he can use us to do everything that he wants to do with our lives. I hope, brethren, that 
uh, this would strengthen your heart and encourage your heart uh, to live this New Testament life in the mighty name of Jesus. This message has been brought to you by the Living Throne Ministry. Our email address is Living Throne Ministry at gmail.com. You can also contact us via the phone or chat. Our number is plus 234-818-615-7852. If you are watching us on our YouTube channel, check the description below. You're going to find all our contact details and social media handle. Please feel free to contact us if you need clarification or you want to engage us in further discussion, counseling, or whatsoever. My name once again is Olu Shegun Moku Olu. May the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ be with his children now and forevermore. Amen.